Hey, what's up guys? Tony here. And as I'm recording this commentary, I'm sitting here on the eve of the end of the world. So this is gonna be the last video that I make before the world ends tomorrow. And if you're happening to be watching this video after the 21st, then we'll know the world did not end. <laughs> uh, of course, I don't believe the world's gonna end tomorrow. For those of you guys who were quite curious because that intro might have been very, um, very dry. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't think the world's gonna end tomorrow. Uh, but it's interesting because there's a lot of people that think that the end of the world is coming, has come earlier. I remember that like, I don't know, six months ago or something, there was a guy who was just like, the world's going to end on this day, I think May or something like that. And it didn't happen. The world didn't end. Uh, and then here we are now. This is the big one. This is the one that the, the Mayans predicted back thousands of years ago with their long count calendar. And this is the one, this is the day. Tomorrow is the day, the end of the world. Actually, it's the end of this cycle, but whatever, people are interpreting it differently. And that's kind of the basis of this commentary is uh, I've been thinking about this for a while now. Uh, I mean, it's not like I've been sitting here going, man, what, I can't figure this out. I mean, it's been passing thoughts, but uh, I've sort of been collecting those passing thoughts and waiting for today, <laughs> of all days, to do this. So to, I guess to put it, so here's the thing is that it seems like all religions have sort of an end, end of day scenario. And uh, it seems that all previous cultures have the same sort of end of day. I mean, there's similarities. There's a, there's a beginning, beginning of the times, uh, and end of days, you know, some sort of an Armageddon. And all cultures go through that. And all religions go through that. And, and here we are. I mean, we've had multiple, in my lifetime, there have been now two three kind of if you count the cold war into the world you know the world war three scenarios um but the one that i really remember was y2k i mean everybody was freaked out about y2k it's just like the computers were gonna like they're gonna blow up you know atm is gonna be spitting money out the zero on the the year like it's gonna go crazy it's gonna think it's 1900 again and it's gonna be end of the world financially and technologically as we know it and the day came and the day went and nothing bad happened. And so people got out of their bunkers if they went to their bunkers and they kind of like, oh, well, let's keep moving on with life. And so now here we are again, we're coming up again, you know, 12 years later. And so I imagine there are a certain amount of people who really believe that today is the end of the world. And so whatever those people are going through, um, I couldn't imagine because I, I know that the world is going to not end and that the sun's going to come up tomorrow. Uh, and, I, and I know this just because of the fact that um, I believe that we as a people are, are one with this world and our world is one with the universe and the universe is this mechanism that's going to keep on keeping on until it's not going to anymore when it drifts apart from, from gravity. You know, things are flying apart uh, at such a, such a rate that eventually things will just you know, push us so far from each other that that there will be no light, no visible light from from anywhere. And of course, the end of the world as we know it, like the end of Earth as we know it, will come when the sun turns into a red giant and either swallows, or it's going to swallow Mercury and Venus for sure. Um, but we don't know if it's going to swallow Earth. You know, that that's sort of um, uh, up for debate whether or not Earth's gravity might keep it from being swallowed up or push it. Out, you know, keep it out the outer edge of, of the Red Giant's Corona area where it'll pretty much be like Mercury today. But all life on Earth will, will be gone. And there's nothing that anybody could do about that because the sun's going to run out of hydrogen and it's going to start burning, burning helium and it's going to you know, burp and it's going to get huge and that's the way it is. So, but the point is though, going back to my topic is though, is, is that there are people that have a need to put themselves into this place where the world is going to end by some force uh, greater than them and that's kind of the conclusion that I've come to is that that there's a there's an innate need for mankind to have these end of the world scenarios because it connects them not to the physical like I'm talking about but it connects them to the supernatural it connects them to something bigger than them and there's always been that connection that every every time, or there's always been this connection that man needs a connection to the supernatural. And I guess how many times could I say connection when I didn't really mean to? <laughs> but um, so man is linked in this way that links himself and herself 
to the supernatural, to something that's bigger than them. Uh, and I think it gives mankind sort of the carte blanche to say, well, you know, we're you know we're only human, you know, we're 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 also not only that we you know we're uh, fallible, but the fact that we're better than all the other creatures on the earth because we are only human. We are human, you know. Uh, so for me, the whole idea that the world's gonna end tomorrow, um, it, it just shows man's arrogance. Uh, within its place in the world, in the physical environment, uh, and a lot of religions do that too. And I don't really want to get into that, but I just find it—I just find it um, sort of amusing and, and frightening at the same time that uh, that people will believe something without really considering the the evidence. Because I mean, when you think about, because here's the, here's the scenario: is that um, tomorrow the world, Earth, the Sun, and the galactic center are all going to be in line. They're going to have this alignment, the celestial alignment, and that the gravity from that is going to tear the Earth apart. And so um, that's what's going to destroy the earthquakes. And, you know, and there's also uh, thoughts about asteroids and stuff falling upon us. Uh, but the world's going to start tearing itself apart because of gravity. I'm like, okay, that's great and all. But the thing is, is if that were true, and as we were creeping closer and closer to this alignment, we would actually slowly be feeling these gravitational tugs. We'd be experiencing earthquakes, tidal waves, you know, there would be signs that something's wrong. And there are no signs that something's wrong. Because you cause the way the world works, we all know that it's cause and effect. There's there's always something that sets off something else, and nothing happens in a vacuum at all in this world, ever. And so uh, we would see those signs. And the other thing is, is we have this uh, galactic alignment every year, actually. Every 21st of December, the sun, the earth, and the galactic center, they all line up. And astrophysicists have been talking about that almost the last two years. I know Neil grass is just like, why is everyone afraid of something that comes as commonly as your birthday? And I was like, oh, that's a good point, you know? So I guess for me, it, it boils down to the fact that I'm more of a... Um, but more of a believer in the physical environment of uh, man's place within this world and the universe, um, more so than any sort of religious aspect as if there's a super, I can't really call it religious aspect because it's not as if this is like a Christian, uh, a Jewish or a Muslim sort of a, or Hindu sort of belief that the world's ending tomorrow. I mean, this is a Mayan, this is an ancient civilization saying that this stuff's going to happen. And there are people who really believe it. I mean, they're, they believe it, it takes precedent over their own religions that don't state when the end of days are going to happen within their own religions. So it's kind of funny. So anyways, guys, the second part that I want to do is just sort of entertain the idea that if today's the last day and tomorrow's the end of the world, what would you, I guess not today, because as I record this, um, like I said, it's the 20th. So if you're, when you're watching this, if you're watching this and you go, oh, okay, so put yourself in their position. If today is the last day and tomorrow's the end of the world, what would you do? I mean, would it be total anarchy like a lot of people show in movies and stuff? Or would it be very somber and you'd want to spend that time with family and loved ones and, um, I don't know, and just sort of quietly doing whatever and, and probably a lot of people would go do uh, the church thing and worship. I don't know about yourselves, but I know that now with my living situation with my parents out of state, I would have normally have said that, you know what? I think that I would have gone to my parents' house. I think I would have, you know, wanted to be around loved ones. If I knew, you know, that the asteroid was coming and they're like, the end of the world, it's going to happen. This thing's going to hit us and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, then I think I would have gone to my parents' house. I think I would have gone to try to get all my family together and just kind of spend that time with them. Uh, but now that my parents live out of state, um, and if tomorrow's the end of the world, I couldn't get to Ohio in time, and I'm pretty sure no one's flying, um, I would probably just go to the beach or something and just kind of hang out, you know, kind of do my thing. Although it'd be kind of weird because I imagine there'd be quite, and, um, quite a bit of anarchy going on outside because people would just be looting and rioting and just all sorts of craziness going on. But I would, I think I would find some sort of a quiet place to go and just sort of take in those last visuals i mean i'm a visual person i don't know about you guys but i'm a definitely a visual person so i'd want to take in those last uh, majestic visuals of the area that i live in you know the ocean maybe the mountains maybe the desert i don't know just kind of go drive around maybe see it all 
But um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys on the other side of the end of the world. And, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later.